Hey everybody, welcome to Falcon Place Icy Journey to the White Wasteland. And this right here is going to be a treat. I have been keeping an eye on this game for, I want to say, almost two months now, just keeping up to date with the development blogs themselves, the press releases, and I finally got the copy of the game here today, which is Thursday. This video should be coming out on Friday, I want to say, and the game itself will be released on Steam on Monday, the 27th of July, if I have my date here correct. Now, what is Icy, you're probably wondering? That's a very good question. If you are familiar with the channel itself, you probably know that nothing really brings joy to Falcon's heart, such as playing post-apocalyptic games. And that's what Icy entails. Uh, think of a setting where civilization that you know of today just came to a screeching halt because of this insane weather climate change that completely froze everything over. That's where Icy kind of takes place, although quite a bit of time removed from that. So as you can imagine, civilization is just about extinct. There's only a few people left over, tribes here and there, bad people, good people, just trying to get by by whatever means necessary. The gameplay itself kind of plays out like something out of Neil Scavenger, and if you're familiar with the channel again, you would know that, you know, it's one of my favorite games that I've played and I've um, shown off in the channel beforehand has a lot of elements of Neil Scavenger. There's also elements of uh, gods will be watching because there is a bit of a group dynamic. You're not over here rolling solo, although you probably will have the option down the line. But initially what you're going to be entailing is going to be a group dynamic where it's up to you to kind of make the right choices to lead these people to a better place. And there's a really story, a big story emphasis in Icy. There's also a mode where you can play just a survival type of game where it kind of um, removes all the story elements from the game. And I'm really excited about that because a lot of games should really encompass that. You know, sometimes they just focus on story, but um, the story is really, really good, really mature. There's a lot of um, touchy subjects here and there. So just keep in mind that it's a serious game in that regard, but it's also really fun to play out and also for you to make the choices. Right off the bat, you have a choice of, you know, making a male or female character. It doesn't really matter which one. I don't think it's going to really affect much. But you have seven points over here to distribute within, um, let's see these stats over here. Body. Represents the overall fitness of the character. It affects the overall HP, how much weight can be carried, and is useful in different situations where a strong and agile body is required to survive. That's really good. We have Mind. Represents how smart, cunning, and clever the character is. It affects the experience gained and is useful in any situation where a quick mind can do the difference. And we also have Word. Represents the charisma and the social attitude of the character. It affects the relationship with the party and is useful in any situation where a strong personality is needed. So, I... Still, again, I'm really new to the game. It hasn't even released just yet. So I'm not entirely sure what would be like the min maxi type of way over here. But again, so this is kind of more of a survival game. It's more fun for you to come up with your own build. So normally what I like to roll with initially is something like really strong and charismatic. So I'm going to make this guy like a really big dumb ox, but just a very big dumb ox who happens to be charismatic. So I'm thinking body maybe up to like five and then we'll pump charis, uh, the, the word charisma up to four. Obviously, only one mind, so I'm not sure exactly how great the distribution is going to be here based on this, but again, I haven't really experienced the game beyond 20 minutes, so I'm not really sure how this is going to impact down the line. But I like this. Now, over here, these are going to be different things that you could actually focus on to help the overall events that are going to be coming down the line. You have 40 experience points to toss around over here, and again, as this over here mentioned, you will actually acquire experience in the game, so it has a little bit of an RPG type of mechanic in there where... The more you survive, the more events you get through, you will kind of accumulate more experience to pump these stats or these skills back up a little bit as well. Uh, I'm going to start off with, however, bow, just because I feel that, you know, in a post-apocalyptic scenario, firearms are going to be kind of scarce and maybe bows that you can kind of make will be a little bit more useful. So I'm thinking we upgrade this bad boy maybe up to four. And again, every single level that you pump into this will require a bit more experience. So we start off with 40, now we're 34 by bringing bow up to four. Now let's come over here and scavenging obviously is going to be really ideal and important I have to imagine. The skill of exploring ruined buildings, searching for anything useful. So obviously the higher the skill is, probably the more things we'll find, which is going to be really important. So I'm thinking we go up to 4 if not 5. We'll do 4 right now and we'll kind of weigh it out here a little bit. Now hunting. The skill of finding preys and hunting them down. It decreases the chance of getting in trouble while hunting and allows the player to use better tactics to deal with animals. So again, scavenging and actually hunting game will be really ideal. So I'm thinking this has, this has to be pretty important as well. So I'm going to take this up to like a four. Alrighty. Now, exploration. The skill of traveling and exploring unknown lands. It improves the overall traveling speed and it's useful in many different situations to find a better way to reach a certain place. Sounds really ideal as well. Maybe like a three on this one for now. Stealth. 
basically avoiding detection, being safe. I'm going to say maybe a three on that one as well, if not even higher. We'll see. Medicine sounds really important to me, but I also want to get Speechcraft and Intimidation up. Just so with Speechcraft, we could actually, you know, take advantage of our four level one word here. So I'm thinking Speechcraft should be even five. And the reason why I'm doing this is because... The better you are at communicating and, and uh, have a higher speechcraft skill, I believe that opens up more paths in terms of um, interacting with your party members to keep their morale up. And also when certain events come up where you could probably talk yourself out of situations, this is going to be pretty useful. So we'll go up to like a 5 on that one. Intimidation. Now this one's a little bit different. The skill of using violence and threats to persuade others. It unlocks a lot of spe uh, special dialogue options. So this kind of almost compliment speechcraft a little bit so let's go and you know what let's just toss the last few points that we have into that so this is going to be the spread uh again i can't tell you if it's gonna be a great spread or not it looks decent to me but we'll see how it goes down so we're already here good to go i guess we could pick a portrait for my character here let's see uh who do i want well, we have three only okay by the way the art in this game fantastic the music amazing it, it, this game has like everything that i like in a game it's just scratching that little special place in falcon's heart not that I really wanted to scratch my heart, but you know what I mean. Uh, I guess we'll go with this young, stunning individual over here. Let's go forward. Now, very story heavy, so expect. Just sit back, relax, have a good time. Make sure we have like a, a cup of cocoa or maybe something cold because it's kind of hot right now. But anyway, it has been two years since you lost your memory in a freak snowside incident. Your savior that day are now your nomad family. Today is a day just like any other. You are out hunting in the forest with your companion and good friend Jerome. You wake up in the woods, surrounded by the snow and ancient trees. A cold wind is blowing on your face, and you suddenly feel that your arms and your legs are chilled to the bone. You feel a gentle touch on your shoulder. It's Jerome that woke you up. The bait you set up two hours ago finally lured a beast. Wake up! We have some prey in sight. He smiles at you and keeps talking. Come on, don't be lazy. Wake the fuck up! You still feel confused and the white glowing snow dazzles you, but you soon manage to get on your feet. The old man is watching you with a friendly smile, just waiting for your brain to start working again properly. Uh, I guess he looks kind of old, not really too old. He kind of has like a Hugh Jackman type of look to him. And can you really put an age on Hugh Jackman? I don't think you can. Hugh Jackman is like, you know, forever young. Anyway, we have a few options over here. And again, the higher speechcraft, you actually open up more options over here. So right now we only have three. This, by, by the way, is a tutorial portion of the game, which I normally skip in games and just jump right into the game. But the tutorial actually does a great part in terms of introducing the characters. And it, since we're doing the story mode, it's really ideal to keep in on this video. So just keep a heads up. Um, so let's see here. We have three options. Give me a second. Just give me a second. I can barely feel my legs. What's up? Or what did I come? Or why did I come? So let's go ahead and say what's up. Look at that majestic deer. Today might be our lucky day. Alright, so, you're damn right. Let's wait for it. We'll see. So, let's see here. So, you're damn right. I agree, my friend. It's been months since the last time we ate some deer. Let's get ready. Let's do it. The deer gets closer, lured by the bait you placed some hours ago. It's a truly majestic beast, and it could provide food for several days. Now, you have two options here. Let Jerome shoot, or you can shoot the deer yourself. Since I feel we are relatively... At least I pumped bows for a reason. Let's take the shot ourselves. Jerome smiles at you and lowers his bow. It's all yours, but if you miss, I may shed some not-so-manly tears. Oh, I think I didn't miss. You slowly draw your bow, pointing the bow directly at the deer's head. You stop breathing for some seconds to stabilize your aim. Then you shoot. It's a perfect shot, and the deer falls in the snow with a muffled sound. Nice fucking headshot, you see? That's why I wanted you to come with me. Let's go grab our dinner. Jerome starts talking or walking towards the deer's carcass. You get closer to the deer. The majestic beast is dead, and it will provide food. Provide days of food to your family. Let's get our dinner home. He looks up at the sun. It's not even noon. Hector will have something else for us to do. You can be sure of that. You tie the deer to a strong pole and you head back to camp. Jerome keeps talking for all the trips, still a little excited for what you're bringing back. And this right here introduces you to the world map itself. Now, obviously, your um, party or yourself will be indicated by this little icon over here. And most of the times when you have like an, a goal or a place you need to go to, it will be indicated by this little pin over here. Um, I'm going to avoid messing around with these things here for now. I will actually talk more about them as we go along here. But just to give you a little small undersight here, this is going to be your inventory system, which you could actually equip stuff to yourself. And I think we should do that. Let's go ahead and put our park on over here. I'm not sure why that's not instantly equipped when you start off, but hey, we'll put our gun over here, park it here. Now, the crowbar could be used as a weapon, but I'm going to hold off on that because I'd rather use it more as a tool. And that's all we have right now. Great. We also have a few dynamites, some um, molotovs, and maybe some... What is this? Smoke grenade. Nice. All right. Good. 
So we have that. That's our inventory right here. Over here, we'll tell our diary, which actually show us some of our active quests and also our completed quests. And then this over here will actually tell us about our party members. Again, you will be controlling a big number of people down the line, and it's up to you to keep them alive and keep them healthy, etc., etc. Over here, you can zoom in on your map as well, but it's not giving us that option right now. This will tell you um, your rations and everything that you have. So right now, we have two medicine, 25 food. Six fuel, which I'm not entirely sure what that's for just yet. Maybe to start fires, and you have um, ammunition as well. Alrighty, so right now we want to go back to camp, which is going to be indicated right over here. Uh, development console, you are free to uh, <laughs> just leave there. Oop! Yeah, apparently closing that off made me change course there for a second. Now, while you're moving through the map, you will be taking down time. Since we're in the tutorial phase, I don't think any of that's going to actually work. But once we get out of the tutorial story introduction, all that will actually start taking place. You're able to see the tents of your camp from a distance. You follow Jerome near his tent, then drop the deer to the ground. Well, we're going to eat fucking deer for dinner. Jerome smiles and puts his hand on your shoulder. Well, well, well. Suddenly, Goran appears behind you. You brought back a week's worth of food. Goran, where are the others? You see Hector coming out of his tent. He doesn't seem to be too well. They're hunting south of here. You know Irma. She can't simply stand doing nothing. So now we have a few choices over here. So since apparently we got an indication he's sick, let's say, hey, you look sick. I'm fine. I'm fine. Hector coughs a couple of more times before speaking again. It's just a cold. It won't kill me. Yeah, maybe a little bit of foreshadowing, right? Well, this deer isn't going to chop itself into pieces. Let's get started and maybe we'll have time for another run. Let me do that. I'm stuck here anyway. My ankle still hurts and I'd better not walk around. Go for another run. Try to get as much food as possible. There's a long road ahead and I don't want a lot. I don't want to lose time every fucking day hunting. Let's stock up on some food now while we can. Jerome looks at the sun. We have time, so I guess we could go for another run. Alright, so, I'm ready, dog. Just don't fall asleep this time, I am the old one. I am the one allowed to randomly go to sleep. Yeah, you got it, Jerome. Come on, let's go. You take the lead this time. Excellent, so we're gonna go back to the forest over here and hunt us down. Some more food. Again, this is all kind of just teaching you the basics we go along over here, but it's gonna have a really big impact on the story. Tutorial hint. So, this will give you an idea as to when you can hunt. Basically, whenever you're in an area that you actually have game around, this right here will light up and it'll tell you, hey, you know what, you could actually hunt here. So once you're hunting, this will not when you hunt, it's not going to be completely automated as we saw just in the first portion. Once you go into hunting, you'll have a few options and it's going to be depending on your stats and everything like that and also the time. So for instance, you are in a dark area of the forest where the vegetation blocks most of the sunlight. You have three options right now. One of them is two hours, four hours, and six hours. And as you can see, two hours is going to have a really high risk attached to it. And then four, you know, like a little bit over halfway, and then six would be probably the least. Since we're going through the tutorial phase right now, I don't think it's going to really bother us too much. So let's do the four hour one. Oh shit, <laughs> I was wrong. This didn't happen the first time I took it for a spin. A small pack of wolves around you and attack your group. Now this will be things that you'll be seeing a lot of when you're actually playing the game outside of the tutorial. Just random events that happen and you kind of have to deal with them in different type of ways. So right now we have use bow and arrows to kill the wolves. Is that going to be a 100% chance of success? Absolutely not. Randomize, my friend, based on your um, stats and skills. Use guns to kill the wolves. We do have guns, but I did focus on bows a bit more, right? And we have drop some food on the ground and run away. I'm not entirely sure we should be fighting wolves, but let's take it out for a spin here. We'll use our bow and arrows to kill the wolves. You successfully kill the wolves, thank god. Now, that's sometimes not it though. Something will sometimes follow up that event. Suddenly you see a wolf charging a companion of yours, unaware of the danger. So you have a few options now. Use a bow and arrow to shoot the wolf down, use your gun to shoot the beast down, or run to push your companion out of the wolf's reach. So you have a few options here. I'm going to go ahead and just trust my aim over here. The arrow lands on the target and the wolf falls dead on the ground. Oh, thank God. And we got 16 food. And events like that will actually either give you more food, but if it fails, you can imagine you will take some damage or whoever is in danger, and you probably won't reap the rewards as much as possible. So we got 16 food out of this whole excursion. And we also have some wolf fur over here, which you could then use for some other crafting on the line, which I, again, have not unlocked just yet. So let's go forward. Alrighty, so go back to camp. Perfect. So... Now we're done over here with the hunting tutorial in a sense. We'll come back over here, meet some more of the survivors. And this should s soon enough actually trigger something for us. Finally, I need some rest. You take a glance at the camp. Your companions are talking and taking care of dinner. It seems everyone came back in safety. Goron approaches you. So how did it go? Not too bad. Come near the fire. Dinner's almost ready. You will need it for tomorrow. Hector seems to be eager to move as soon as possible in the morning. You take your seat near the fire while the others greet you. Irma, Goron's wife, start looking, starts giving plates of cooked meat to the group. So Irma's going to be Goron's wife. 
really important for you to remember names and um, who is who just for later on purposes. Let's all be thankful to our hunters for the meat we're about to eat. Hector coughs after speaking. Uh, I'm not sure about Hector's looking too good there, man. Will you tell us where we're headed? Not far from here. Tomorrow we will go scavenging in a town nearby. I hope to find something useful for our upcoming travels. No, I mean, where are we going to end up after the long run? Where will we spend the winter? We will travel south, far from any common route. We must get away from the plains, Hector coughs again. The planes are becoming dangerous and I'm not talking about all the bandit activity. There are rumors about more and more red horsemen swarming around here. What does it mean? I'm tired of traveling without a purpose. We have always stayed in the plains. Why should we travel to unknown lands? Don't worry, it's all snow and cold just like here. You don't miss anything special. <laughs> what a smart ass. I don't care what we do. If the planes have become that dangerous, we should probably leave. I won't put my children at risk without a reason, and traveling away from any known route is a huge risk, especially when the only thing we know is that we're going south. So, I mean, she does have a point, you know, I mean, we would like to know a bit more. So now we have a few options here, and this might be based on the fact that we have a pretty high speech craft, so we have a few things that we could actually go with here. Does it really matter? It would help to know more. That should be enough. I agree. Hector failed, never failed us, and say nothing. So let's see. It would help to know more. I have to give her credit for that. And there's no need to worry about that. We've already been south of here. Jerome looks at you. And you should remember that it's where we found you. Remember, we were found by these people that brought us in and made us part of their family here. So... Uh, let's see here. Let's say, and then what? We'll keep walking? We'll spend the winter there? Exactly. It will be a hard winter if we have to spend it walking on the mantle. I don't want to do that. I have two children. Hector seems quite annoyed. I already said that the planes are becoming dangerous. You don't want a Red Horseman clan to attack us and enslave the survivors, do you? It's been better to... It's better to walk on the mantle for the entire winter than face them. The sooner we run away, the safer we will be. Alrighty, so... I mean, he has a point. I mean, if the Red Horsemen are allegedly coming, I think we should probably get out of here. So, we have no other choice. Yes, but I'm confident that we will be able to survive and maybe find a better place where to live. I'm getting too old to walk all day anyway. And you're not the only one, but I'm clearly in better shape than you. I can keep living this life for years to come. Am I the only one with the working brain around here? We'll be running into the unknown. Alrighty. And let's just go with better than dying, right? Yeah, because no one ever got killed because he didn't know what he was about to go face. Do as you like, but I already know we'll all regret this. Irma goes inside her tent before giving anyone the chance to say anything. Oof. <laughs> anyway, I'll talk to her. I'm worried too, but facing the Red Horseman scares me even more. She will understand eventually. Hector coughs a little before replying. I hope so. I don't want to discuss this ever again. Nothing of importance happens during the rest of the evening. You eventually go to bed to prepare yourself for the next day. You wake up in the morning, hear some voices outside. Hector and the others are preparing the plan for the day. Okay, people. Now we will spread into pairs and search for anything useful in that small town over there. Especially be on the lookout for any tools. Irma will stay here with the children and guard our stuff. If anything happens, you scream. I will go with Jerome Garan. You will go with Mark. Hector turns to you. And you will go with Demetra. I hope it won't be a waste of time. Goran puts on his backpack. I'm tired of seeing only empty buildings. Let's ask about the area. I'm a little ancient. It's a little ancient town, so there's a lot of buildings. I hope to find something to scavenge, something left behind. And let's see what the family needs. Tools and anything we can sell or use, but I won't complain if you bring back an assault rifle. Alrighty, let's depart. Demetra nods at you. I'll follow your lead. So this time around, we're rolling with Demetra as opposed to Jerome. And this is our next objective over here. So again, we're going through the tutorial phase right now, so definitely once the we're out of here, we'll be giving free roam as to what to do. So this will tell us about scavenging itself. And scavenging you'll be able to do in big locations while hunting you'll be able to do like in forests and things like that. You find a small town. Now over here we have a few options again. Two hours, kind of high risk. Four hours, a lot less. And six hours, completely decreased just about. Let's go with four. You find a store but it's completely locked down. Try to pick the old building's lock because we do have a lock pick. We could also try to blow up the secondary door or just leave. Let's try... Uh, I used this one off camera when I tried the sound. So let me go with this one and see if that actually affects anything. You successfully blow up the door and you're able to explore the building. A companion of yours is about to fall off a, cl a cliff. You have to act quickly. So quickly run to save your companion. Or carefully try to save your companion. So you have two options over here based on our skills and the items that we might have uh, on us at the moment. So I'm going to say quickly run because again our dude is relatively um, athletic, right? You managed to save your companion, great. We got seven medicine from this location, no food, two fuel, no bullets. And we also have a frying pan, a toy truck maybe, or toy train anyway, and another lockpick, great, we'll take everything. 
And go back to the sun. Um, go back before sunset. Excellent. So that went relatively well. And if I'm right, we should be hitting touchy terrain pretty soon. After a couple of hours, you manage to reach the others at the camp. Garan spots you from a distance and greets you by raising his hand. You can see the sadness in his face. What's going on? This is not easy to say. Goran takes a deep breath. Hector is badly sick. He passed out a few hours ago and he's now in his tent, barely able to breathe. Oof. Will he survive? The situation is desperate. We have no medicine to cure this kind of sickness and we're, he's pretty bad now. You see Jerome coming out of Hector's tent, his face painted with suffering. As far as you know, he and Hector had been good long f uh, friends for a long time. People gather around Hector's tent as Mark finally asks about him. How is he? In that same moment, Irma comes out of her tent. It's over. We couldn't do anything. Holy fuck! Why didn't he say a thing about his health? You know Hector, he wanted us to get away from the planes and he didn't want anything to stop us. Goron stays silent for a few moments and then he raises his head and speaks again. I will prepare for the body for the funeral. You should go and take a break. People gather around while Jerome comes near you and sighs again. You two are now alone. I met Hector more than 20 years ago, and yet, he said nothing, not to anyone, not to me. He just died, leaving a mess behind. Tomorrow we need to vote for a new leader and it will be a mess. Everyone will discuss, I bet Irma will go crazy again, screaming and threatening people. So we have a few choices here. We'll get through this. Seems like the ideal one. We will, as we always do, but it won't be easy. Rough times are ahead of us. I need to be alone. Call me when Goron has finished with the fire. Jerome walks away and sits not far from the camp. After some time, you are called by Demetra. Everything is ready for the funeral. All the people gather around a big stack of wood. After making sure that everyone is there, Goron throws a lit torch on the pyre, which slowly starts to burn, shrouding Hector's body in the dancing of bright flames. Jerome has a sad face and says nothing. He just stands in front of the pyre and stays there after everyone else is gone. You're tired and you proceed to your tent, hoping to get a decent night of sleep. But a terrible scream wakes you up in the middle of the night. You see strange lights come through the fabric of your tent and hear the noise of clogs thumping the ground. Several guns firing as well. You are under attack. And I think this is the perfect opportunity for us to wrap up the very first episode, right? Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Leave a thumbs up, leave a like. The support really does mean a lot and I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. Expect the next episode out. I'm going to say tomorrow right after this one tomorrow because I'm enjoying it. I want to show off as much as possible of it. So stay tuned for the next episode. Leave a thumbs up. The support really does mean a lot. I will catch you next time.